Everybody loves a good story. And I have an amazing Ukrainian war rescue mission story to share here at the Lex Media Gallery in Lexington, very close to where I used to teach at the Bowman and the Bridge School. So in order to get into this story, we have to go back to February. Winter was having its way with us and Putin was having his way with his dream to regain all the land he could. And one day I got a call from a friend and this starts the story. Her son was living in Berlin and while my friend Carol was on the phone, she was just about gasping, telling me, guess what James has set up? He set up a rescue mission for 13 Ukrainians. This mission, I think, emerged from the feeling that James' family, his grandparents, were Ukrainians. There was something that ran deep within his blood. So he decided that he would get together with three other friends and they would drive down into Ukraine and rescue 13 people who would be waiting for them. So then, click, that's all I heard. I wanted to hear more. My friend Carol couldn't tell me more. By the way, she taught with me in Lexington years ago, so there's a nice connection here. And I waited and I waited, and the call came, and she told me that they had gotten down into Ukraine. But the first thing that blockaded with them was a band of Roma gypsies. They have these gypsy camps and they came to the windows of the car and they banged on the doors and they hit their tires and they were wondering, what do they want? Well, they just moved on, kept going, didn't worry about it, but that was the first thing that got them kind of upset, like we're really into the territory now. So then so they got to the place where they knew they were gonna pick up these people and there was going to be one of the person's mothers there. There was a friend of James lived in Berlin and there she was standing in line with all the people and had an immediate collapse a breakdown she was shrieking and crying and falling to her knees and so one of the fellows in the group he took off with her to take her to a safe place and the rest of the group moved on in the vans with a cat they went up over the Azor Mountains and the cat was meowing and screaming and the snow was coming down at night. And James and his friends could barely see the highway. They motored their car and kept going, kept going. Something guided them to safe place. And there were no interruptions. There were no guards that stopped and interrogated them. It was amazing. He got back home to Berlin and the people were dispersed. But my friend, Carol told me that she was very distressed about James, that maybe he had taken on too much because he couldn't talk when he called on the phone. He couldn't sleep. She felt he was traumatized by everything that he saw and would he ever be okay again. So after I talked with my friend Carol for several days, I felt, what can I do? Here I am, I'm living on Spy Pond, it's pretty here, and is there anything I can do? And yes, people were sending money and making contributions, but then one day I had an idea. How about using my art to express all the ramifications of things happening in this war? And that this would be a rotating exhibit. And at first it would be at Lex Media, and then it would be at another place. It would be at the Old Schwab Mill in September, and maybe the Ukrainian Center in, at Harvard, which would be very nice. I'd like to tell you that there are nine pieces nine collages in this exhibit, and each of them has a piece of writing that echoes the feelings that came from within me after I created them. And when I started this exhibit, I thought, what is gonna hang this thing together? I needed something that was going to pull everything and hinge the pieces together invisibly. And the idea of saying who, what, where, when, why, to start off each piece would create continuity here. So when we see this woman here sitting in a pile of rubble, we ask the question, who is this woman? What if you imagine she was your mother or your grandmother? And here she sits. Everything has dissolved around her. She's sitting in a pile of rubble. Her house maybe that we think is back here has been demolished. She's holding her head here. Maybe she's hearing bombs going off and her, her beautiful little hands here that have worked 
with many things over her life kind of looks like this poor little old stick here that was put here. And the one thing that I wanted to put at the base of this collage was a tapestry that looked as if the tapestry of her life had become unraveled. And they're mixed with pieces of shrapnel and just shreds. Everything is shredded. Yet we can see the beauty and the reflection of the life she once had. And there was something about the picture when I found her with her blue scarf and the blue shutters and her blue scarf. And I found these two pieces of blue chips in a pile of things that I keep for doing collages. And they just sort of give an uplift and a, a bit of hope. So I want to hold hope for this woman. And after I finished doing the collage, this is the, person, the piece that I wrote, questions. What if this was your mother or grandmother, sitting in a pile of rubble, feeling lost and abandoned, amid traumatizing trouble? Words can't convey what she might like to say as everything she cherished has been taken away. Where can a woman her age find a place to store her feelings, her treasured memories and belongings in a land that is no more? How can it be that all that remains at the end of her life can only be stored in one empty word called war? In the second collage, we see people walking together, clinging to the last pieces of their belongings that they own, walking. Who knows where they're going? While bombs are going off, fires are surrounding them, you can just feel in this piece, it's smoky, it's dark, it's dense, and pieces of metal and bark are falling into the earth, and the earth is trying to somehow to absorb the shock, and you see the shock waves of the earth while these people walk above. Who knows where they're going? And the question that was asked at the beginning of this piece was, how do you say goodbye to your country and all you have ever known as home? Do these people know that they would ever return? Don't know. But this is the piece that emerged after I finished this piece, the shock walk. Where are these people headed on their journey to survive? Holding hands, walking on, while one rage-filled man contrives to create a scheme that generates deprivation, displacement, and fears for those who have joined the shock walk, dragging bags and belongings soaked with their tears. Here we have our old woman again, and this is kind of a memory, a memory of what it was like, or maybe what it would be like if she were with her granddaughter again. And the question asks, when will she be able to put her arms around her loved ones and celebrate their having survived? Will that day ever come? In the meantime, we see this woman wrapped in lace, her little granddaughter is hovering, wanting to be comforted, as the old woman is too. In the background, we have the flag of Ukraine and buildings, and there's no destruction here, but we know that something's happened. And I just want to point out there's this wonderful substance that you can put over paper that cracks it and gives it a feeling that, ah, something is destroyed. So there's a little bit of that throughout here. But then we get into this part, and these are just beautiful designs that we can imagine maybe she had in her home, something hanging on the wall, wallpaper, and little treasures that were left over. And what I've tried to do with this collage exhibit is to vary the feeling of drama to something that's relaxing, that you can sink yourself into and then be startled again, just like the rhythm of the war. So this is the piece that I wrote afterwards called When. When will there ever come a day when I'll be home again, rocking in my chair, daring to sit by open windows with no bombs, no flares, no sirens to scare, with time just to sit feeling Katerina's toes resting on my feet, nesting again, together again, just listening to our hearts beat. One more time, we see our woman, our distressed woman. This is kind of a surrealistic image, perhaps a dream, of her just trying to absorb 
the shock of what has happened. She yearns for the bed she once slept in. Her tiny slippers are waiting for her at the base of her bed. But she's locked behind a window, locked, trapped in this horrific war. And this collage was fun to make with pieces of paper and this black and white and just tearing up pieces. It was very cathartic for me doing each of these and this in particular and then putting it down and then wondering what will happen to her. And by the time I had gotten to this piece, I had really sunk myself into the feelings of what was really going on. And I wasn't sure whether I was going to be able to get through this because it was pretty challenging. So this is the piece I wrote, which is really quite deep. Black and white. Just wondering, did the colors black and white symbolize the contrasting forces of innocence and evil without and within a fight? Apart from the lightness of day turning into the darkness of night? No, I don't think so. Because a day's rotation reflects the natural diurnal flow within nature where there is no foe. So here we are in a train station. Probably this site would have been something that one could see all over Ukraine. Women sitting with their children, sitting with their toys, maybe animals, the last things that they could take from their homes. And it, the question we ask is, where are these people going? And what if they never find a place that feels like home again? And inside this station, I tried to make this look like it was the walls that you might find, tin, old tin walls in a Ukrainian bus station or a train station. And these are little tiny pieces of the insides of a clock as time passes on. How long did they have to wait? How long did they have to endure this? This is the clock, and this is a little frayed Ukrainian flag. And the piece that I wrote after this, and as you notice, there are no men there with these women. Separated, young and old women, waiting in lines on end, strips of hopes and dreams they were forced to suspend with no men to support them. They were called away to defend. Both sexes separated by war must fight in their own heroic ways until they reunite. Here we are with one of my favorite pieces. I just wanted to go to town on Putin. I did, and all of us did, in our own ways. But I said to myself, your exhibit is going to be thoughtful, tactful, thought-provoking. So, as tasteful as I could, <laughs> I created this vision of Putin and asked the question, why do innocent people have to suffer? Well, the madness of one man satisfies himself by destroying the heart of a country he wishes to retrieve. So I thought, well, how am I going to characterize this man? How am I really going to make a statement? And I'm a jeweler, and I have lots of pieces of metal, and so I found this great piece. It was silver to begin with, and I was going to turn it into a tarnished, fiery crown. And all these pieces are jutting out and just feel like him coming at the world and doing whatever he wants to. And in the corner here is KGB on the crown. And up here is a little piece of earth that symbolizes the earth that he was taking away from people. Here's a screw. He has a screw loose. This is the tattered flag, a piece of metal, the tattered flag of Russia, which he wishes to reclaim, but he probably never will in its own original way. And this was really fun. This is a little tea egg, and I love putting these pieces of wire through it, which represent the wild strands coming out of his brain, the wild brain waves of Putin. So I wrote this piece about the tarnished crown. Once there was a diabolical plan hatched under a tarnished crown, created to destroy every village, every Ukrainian town by a man who seldom smiled with evil eyes that matched his conniving frown. The man fancied himself a king who plotted and planned by the hour to restore the USSR to its rightful position, glory, and power. 
History records the would-be king's plan didn't work as it was riddled with flaws, ones which backfired under a system of universal laws. Over time, this man felt helpless as his plan did not work. He lost his pride, he lost his smirk. He did himself in with fits of rage, which took him down at just the right time on the world center stage. And here we have a collage that really tears your heart out. Here's a man who has fallen into a hole. We don't know whether he's alive or he's dead. And the question is asked, how will it end? Lives lost, buried in debris, shadows muffling, wailing moans. This piece, it still gets me as I see that. That could be anyone's brother, anyone's father, anyone's child, I don't know. But I put this together with an old basket and just pieces of bark which are always wonderful, and then pieces of paper you rip up and put. And I just wanted this to be very, very simple. And this little chain which signifies his life force just dwindling, maybe, or maybe he's alive. We don't know. But today is the title. I never thought today would be the day I might die, with no chance to escape, with exploding bombs falling from the sky. I tried to duck. I tried to run for cover. And while gasping for breath in this hole in the ground, I may never be a lover of life again. Please, God, don't let me die. And this is how you would write that in Ukrainian. Please don't let me die. And here we are at the eighth piece in the exhibit. Two hands folded carrying hope within the palms. And the question that is asked is, what will sustain Ukrainians and bring them peace in this lifetime when they've lost their homes, their families, their friends, and their beloved country as they once knew it? And I just wanted to have this exhibit sort of close down with something gentle and a reminder that perhaps there is great hope in the midst of this struggle. And I use very few pieces, a little bracelet, little hands praying, little flowers growing, and the whiteness of innocence coming back to this country. And the piece that I wrote was a prayer. Dear God, are you listening while your people cry out, fall on their knees, begging and petitioning, you to stop the devastation of war, to end it now when no one down here, no one knows how. Amen. Here we are at the last piece in the collection with people with their arms raised supporting Ukraine, the map of Ukraine. And we ask the question, what can we do for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine? And are we as big and brave as they are to hold their story in our consciences as long as they suffer? And this piece is just, just simple. And I hope maybe each of you can imagine this could be you or me or someone in your family who has this idea, I'm going to support Ukraine in some way. I am, I am. I'm not going to let the beautiful weather of summer just take things over and just say I'm not going to watch the news because we are all connected. These could be cousins, mothers, fathers, I've already said it, but this is just a simple piece to remind us to do something. And here's the piece that I wrote about the map. Here's the map where it's all going on each and every day. Can we face what's happening? Or does it make us want to run away? Possibly war on Earth's feelings we'd rather not face. But can we be committed and brave enough to keep up the pace with our brave Ukrainian brothers and sisters who endure the horrors of war each day 
when everything they have ever known has been brutally taken away. We have to keep finding ways to give wholeheartedly and say in some way, we stand with you. And here at the Lex Media Studio, we've put this piece. It's barren, but it's filled with a light, a light of hope and space, space for you to imagine new ways that you might discover to support the war effort, to support the Ukrainians. Big ways or little ways? And I have something I'd like to share with you. A friend of mine upstairs makes, and right when the war started, she started wearing them on her coat. I wore them on mine, and it generated incredible conversations with people and Ukrainian people in our town that came to her and spoke to her and said, thank you, thank you for remembering us, and let me tell you my story. So will you be one of those people who can think of something creative to do during the summer or during the fall? Just may occur to you at some time. Have a yard sale, donate the money, but just to keep alive this feeling, we are one with the Ukrainians. And I'd like to say that this exhibit, which I'm very happy to have shared here at Lex Media, will be at the Old Schwab Mill in September, perhaps in August and September, and it may be in the Ukrainian Research Center at Harvard later on. So thank you for watching.